Hi, I'm Matteo Mancini, a research fellow from the University of Sussex, and today I will be talking about uh, acceptable research articles and uh, what value they add to meta-analysis and uh, systematic reviews. So let's start with the thought experiment. Let's think about the generic meta-analysis and the object that we expect to find in it. Well, for most uh, uh, outsiders from the hardcore uh, uh, statistics field, this object would be a table. And uh, it's actually a useful table since uh, it allows to um, quickly find uh, uh, information that otherwise would be probably spread in the paper, but it still has uh, some limitations. There are actually the same limitations of uh, static reviews and the more in general of static papers. The first one is about usability and readability, since we would need to actually go sequentially through even a, either a table or uh, a section to find the information we are interested in. Another issue is that the statistical analysis is uh, in some way a black box, because even if a lot of, um, of uh, details are provided, in any case, we cannot see uh, the actual code that uh, was used to perform the analysis. And finally, um, as a result, uh, um, in order to reproduce the analysis, we would need to actually re-implement it. So what would actually overcome uh, all uh, of these uh, limitations? That would be a living runnable paper. That is actually the, another definition of acceptable research article, uh, in short, uh, ERA. So ERAs can embed both text and code, and they can be accessed through a browser, so a very common tool. And actually, these days, they are rendered through uh, computational notebooks, uh, something that uh, is uh, becoming quite popular. For uh, people that are not familiar with notebooks, they are um, uh, objects able to combine code, visualization, and text in a single document. Um, most people are familiar with Jupyter, but actually there are uh, uh, more uh, um, notebook systems. Uh, most of them, they are able to uh, handle uh, uh, multiple languages, and some of them are even polyglots, so they are able to um, uh, handle multiple languages in uh, the same notebook. So um, I'm talking about the arrays because we recently published an interactive uh, meta-analysis through this um, this format and uh, uh, the topic was uh, the uh, validation of MRI biomarkers through histology. Uh, we used Python with some uh, bits of R and we mainly uh, relied on uh, the Plotly library for the interactive visualization. Uh, we now go through some of the interactive tools that we leverage to actually uh, enhance the presentation of our work. So starting from the actual literature survey process, uh, we use the Sankey diagram to actually show how the screening pro procedure uh, um, happened. And uh, we can see the details of how many articles we had at each stage. And we can even see what were the exclusion criteria when moving from one stage to the other. After we defined uh, uh, which were the suitable studies, we um, use three maps to um, summarize uh, uh, these papers. And this is a good uh, complement for uh, a table, for example, because it provides the same information, but in an organized way. For example, here is by structure, then by tissue condition, then by species. And uh, actually, you can interact with, uh, with this object, and uh, you can uh, see all the information for each paper, and uh, you have even uh, the link to the paper. Another way that uh, three maps can uh, be used is to actually highlight uh, um, uh, collateral information. Like in this example, we have the color that is proportional to the coefficient of determination that in our study was the FX sides. And uh, the size of each of the, bo the boxes is actually proportional to the sample size. So you can uh, look at uh, um, studies where uh, the sample size was small and the FX size was big. Uh, another way to look at this kind of pattern is a bubble plot, for example. And since it's an interactive figure, you can still uh, retrieve the information for each paper when you look on a specific bubble. 
And now let's move to more quantitative plots. So uh, we use the uh, mixed effect model in uh, this paper. And uh, to show the results, we use the forest plot. Since in plot, you don't have uh, um, uh, forest plots per se, we actually realize them combining different uh, uh, scatter plots. And again, you can interact with it and you can see the result of our modeling and the prediction interval, for example. And finally, on top of the mixed model, we actually um, did the pairwise comparisons and we used the heat maps to summarize the results in terms of both z-score and p-values. So how does it look in the wild? How does it look like there? So uh, at first, uh, um, it seems like a normal paper. You have the abstract, the text. The difference is when you actually reach uh, a figure, since uh, the figure is first uh, interactive, as uh, we have seen in the presentation. And then you can actually expand the code. You can look at the code that was used to uh, generate the figure. And then uh, you can even change uh, the code and run it again, and the figure will get uh, updated. So where you can publish these uh, uh, ERAs? Um, well, in terms of journals, currently eLife uh, and the upcoming OHBM Aperture are publishing them. Uh, eLife is in life sciences and OHBM Aperture is in neuroscience. Then there are dedicated platforms such as Stencila, Codocean, and the nonprofit profit Neurolibre. Stencila in particular is the one that uh, um, provide the infrastructure to eLife. And finally, you can simple, uh, simply sharing the, the notebooks on GitHub as uh, a, a corollary to a, a standard journal paper. Uh, for a more detailed review, Conkol and colleagues were, went through the actual ways to share these objects. Uh, I want to conclude this uh, uh, presentation by thanking all my colleagues and thank you for the attention. And uh, if you are uh, curious uh, about this and you want to get in touch, uh, this is uh, my email and you can uh, uh, double check my blog where uh, I posted about uh, interactive tree maps. Thank you.